Good day and a warm welcome to the 10th edition of the European Film Festival South Africa. My name is Taryn Joffe and we are delighted to have the presence today of Felix van Groenigen and Charlotte van der Miesch, the accomplished directors behind The Eight Mountains. This beautiful film received the 2022 Grand Jury Prize at the Cannes Film Festival and it is wonderful that South African audiences will now have the chance to experience it. The Eight Mountains is an adaptation of Paolo Pugnetti's 2016 novel, chronicling the enduring friendship of two boys in a remote Alpine village. Felix and Charlotte, please could you share your, uh, the inspiration behind choosing the story for adaptation? Um, somehow it um, uh, it came our way. Uh, it was like the universe was telling uh, first me and then us <laughs> that we had to make this film together. Uh, and it what's special about it is that it's um, we're Belgian filmmakers. I had made a film in the U.S., but I had never considered making a film in Italian. <laughs> Because I didn't speak it, but but when I read this book, uh, who was proposed to me by different <laughs> different people, um, I I I um, I I knew indeed that I was the right person to do this. Um, so at some point, the producers uh, who had the rights to the book actually contacted me, and then it was really clear, yeah, I have to do this. But what they said also was, yeah, like maybe you could do it in English. Um, but this very authentic novel that takes place in the northern Italian Alps <laughs> feels so. There's something extremely true about it. So it, I thought it was bonkers to um, to change it and to let it take place in you know the highlands or in the Rocky Mountains or anything. So um, I said I want to do it, but in Italian. And then we were a couple in real life and who had been working on, on different projects in different forms uh, decided to write it together. Uh, because I have been directing films, but Charlotte hadn't. She's an actress and a musician and a very talented writer also. But during the the writing of this uh, of this story, the adaptation of this this story about friendship and 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 so many more things, it's really about life and uh, making choices and and figuring out where you want to go and looking back at what your yeah, what you carry from your ancestors, etc. It really made sense for us to, as a couple, as as uh, lovers, as parents, as friends, also to make this film together. So at some point, I asked Charlotte to join me, and uh, she also thought it was a good idea. So off we went to Italy with our son uh, for months and months that we could spend in the time in the mountains and and make that film there, which was an incredible, incredibly beautiful adventure and. Um, and um, a life-changing event, actually. Thank you so much. Uh, so the character of Pietro, uh, portrayed brilliantly by Luca Marinelli, appears to be caught between two worlds. What do you think is important for viewers to understand about Pietro's modern day predicament, grappling with a sense of purpose and belonging? Hmm. I guess, like mo many people today, he's uh, not prepared anymore as his father father was in a way, coming from his generation before him, uh, to accept that there's a uh, a dark season <laughs> of year where you work, and actually that's most of the year you work in the city and uh, you don't really take time for yourself or for beautiful things. You know, you just work and then there's a moment of leisure and and pleasure let's say and um i guess most of us now don't want that anymore we want a good work uh and quality of life balance uh we want yeah we we're conscious of 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 our time here on earth and we want to also like make it a better place in a in a positive way so uh, I think a lot of people do so. So I think there's something um, he, he 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 could do a lot of things. He's good at math and he's good at science and things like that, but he wants something different. <laughs> he doesn't want the path of his father. 
But then, of course, he's a city child. He's also a child of uh, of today. He he loves uh, the you know connecting to people easily and having a comfortable life. And then he dreams also maybe of of joining Bruno in the mountains for real, like living there. But he will never do that because that's also not where he belongs, and it's not a way of living that he can actually sustain for himself. It won't really work only as a place to go to once and again. And also that's something that we recognize. It's also part of the movie. Like we dream of going out, you know, to live outdoors and, and to grow our own vegetables there and live in a community of people and <laughs> a little bit of a, yeah, an alternative way of, you know, ecologic living. living. But um, also that is, uh, some people do it, but it's not for most people. Um, it's not the choice we've made. So he's in between worlds. And trying to find his own way. Uh, as you say, uh, the relationship uh, with his with his father was uh, difficult because he didn't want to chart the same path, and it was quite heartbreaking, um, but also interesting to watch the process of that detachment and distancing. But I would love to talk a little bit about uh, the cinematography. You worked with Ruben Impens. And I'd love to know how you crafted uh, this this vision kept, uh, to capture the breathtaking landscapes of the village and the El Pejo. Um, so yeah, Ruben is um, a cinematographer I've worked with all my life. <laughs> uh, we made um, seven features together and a short film and some video clips. And, and um we question everything when we start always uh, we start with a blank page and we let the story decide and um, so part of this process the biggest choice we made I guess at some point was to decide uh, to shoot this film in a in a more square format in the 4-3 academy ratio um, which seems counterintuitive or a movie that is taking place in in the mountains and where landscapes are really important. But we we discovered it along the way that it just really made sense, that it made it more intimate, that it that the framing made the mountains more part of the story um, uh, without showing them separately. Like uh, so that square format actually is more vertical and mountains are vertical. So often we could see the mountains um, above our characters. Um, and, and as I said, it made it also more intimate in a way. So it, it what it did to this film was it made you, when you were in the cinema, lean forward and you want to get in there instead of like having it, you know, like blockbuster movies like take you <laughs> and fly over the mountains no you're 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 it's more intimate and in a strange way that really works um um on the other uh hand i mean so that was a big choice and then we decided to ever do everything as real as possible so we really built the house there we really visited those peaks you see in the in the movie with with our with our crew and it made it sort of yeah artis artisanal i guess and and there's like a, a a thing of labor to be to if you do that like it's it takes a lot of energy and i i guess you feel that too mm -hmm. absolutely and uh, in cinema, we've witnessed some really pivotal portrayals of male relationships from father-son dynamics, for example, in your 2018 film, Felix, Beautiful Boy, starring uh, Steve Carell and Timothy Chalamet, to poignant queer romances uh, seen in God's Own Country and Brokeback Mountain. What do you feel sets Pietro and Bruno's relationship apart, making it distinctive? Uh, there's a, it's not a romantic love I mean not not on the uh, first degree uh, so maybe it's underneath but we never know so even for us it always uh, remained a mystery mm -hmm. and we, we love that so there's something really 
uh, unspoken about it. There's something extremely gentle. Um, um, they have a hard time communicating, but they actually really do at the same time. When it really comes down to it, when it's important, they do. Um, so there's, um, yeah, that there's actually in the whole movie, in the whole story, just one argument between them, which is which is uh, fascinating to have two main characters that actually don't have a lot of conflict. Um, but with your, I don't know, with your best friends, you don't really have a lot of conflict. I mean, right? I mean, I, sometimes uh, you do, and, yeah. and I mean, it's it's a film, it's a story, so it's, it's I like know, what but the that's, basis is of, of drama, right? I know, but, but that's just, why I want to say <laughs> this. It feels like a real friendship to me because they really do everything they can to understand each other, <laughs> to 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 accept the choices of the other. You know, the one who stays, accept that the other one leaves. The one who leaves and comes back accepts, has to accept that this one wants to stay, you know. So there's this whole dynamic and, and it's really true to friendship. Uh, and well, friendship is love uh, because it's it's painful that, you know, if you won't live together with a friend probably. Well, and when you're young, you might, you know, but then you, you start a family somewhere else or you go live with a lover somewhere else, you know, so it's uh, something it's there's always this goodbye in a friendship. It's, uh, you know, you always say goodbye, uh, although you would love to spend as much time with your best friends as you do with your husband or your wife or, you know, the, your, your kids. You might want to spend as much time with your friends, but you don't um, most of the time. So so this is. Uh, this is this conflict in friendship there's a, there's more goodbyes and there's also like getting back together and then it's just like the day of, yeah like yesterday like nothing changed but they, sometimes things have changed because you grow up and and you know people do change and that's difficult and how to handle that so I think what's particular, particular also is that they really inspire each other even yeah you know in their life's choices and they also come to a point where they can't anymore and they try to accept yeah no. I think uh what what was a takeaway for me uh, in this regard was how in the end the conclusion they they realized or Pietro realized that they knew each other um, better than than anyone else knew them uh, mm -hmm. which is interesting that the strongest relationships in their lives um were there, was the relationship they had with each other rather than, you know, with their parents or their romantic relationships. So definitely yeah. think that is quite unique. And uh, uh, just one more question. The Eight Mountains uh, has a, a resonating theme. And this is, uh, I think, our capacity for love. And what insights do you have regarding this powerful message? it's a big one <laughs> our capacity for love <clears throat> we were going to a pretty rough time making this film between us and it was a challenge um, I, uh, like our love was challenged, challenged during this time um, working on this story was very healing to us because it's about a love of love relationships, you know, a child towards his parents, a child towards a friend, uh, you know, friends, then of course, love romantic re relationships and just uh, towards a place, towards life itself. Like, how do you, how can you love your life? What, is, what, what do you need to love your life to find your place in life? To love for the earth, for, for nature. What is nature? Are we nature? Yes, we're part of nature. Um, so it, it is a big love letter to also the nature of life and accepting death within life. And I don't know, it was just everywhere in this story. And it was very helpful for us also to rediscover each other as beings on the earth. And, you know, we, we've been hurt and we didn't know how to communicate at a certain point. We just communicated through this story, talking about our youth, our parents, losing our fathers you know, how we forgave them or try to forgive them or, you know, deal just with the most essential things in life, uh, which are always about love. So. Yeah. And, and, and 
most importantly for me also without cynicism i was confronted with a lot of cynicism and and it's like it was a very deliberate choice to focus on this story um that had no cynicism in it at all and uh, i think it's mm -hmm. that's important to uh to see that love's everywhere <laughs> like to yeah to focus on the good things Felix and Charlotte, thank you so much for the perspectives you've shared today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Had a nice conversation and enjoy the film. We do hope that. Yeah. <laughs>